kids are going to get lots of questions about that. Because yeah. People will always ask. They'll say, "You don't look Chinese." Right, right. You, but you don't. I don't understand. You don't look Chinese. And only in college, when I took uh, a class called Hapa Issues. I don't know if you're familiar with the word Hapa. No. I'm Teach not. it to your girls. Okay. It's a good one. It actually comes from Hawaii, uh -huh. and it means Hapa Haoli means someone that's Asian and white, of mm. mixed race descent, so usually American. Right. Um, and so Hapa has just sort of been taken to mean anyone that's of mixed Asian descent. Now that I know a lot of people that are like me, mm. that are biracial Chinese and white, that are Hapa, we all tend to look very similar. Yes, there's sort of like a spectrum, and some you might say, oh yeah, you can tell more that they're you know, Chinese, or they have Chinese in them, or you know, mm. there are others that look monoracial white almost. But there's sort of a spectrum where once you recognize that, yeah, it's there. So I tell people now, no, I don't look Chinese. I look like I'm Chinese and white. Because mm. that's what I am. You know, so I mm. think it's it's interesting. People will have this reaction. So you, you, something to tell the girls. I will. <laughs> yeah, I'll make a note of that. Yeah. That's a good point. I find the whole, the whole spectrum of relationships here also very interesting. And in doing research for the show, I found that... Um, some people believe, researchers believe, that there are four models of intercultural relationships. Yes, yeah, so I'm curious what you guys think so of this. So what, what's the models? Okay, are? so the models are, <laughs> they are pretty much what they sound like. So the first one is submission. I'll explain them. Submission? Submission. Yeah. Is it a S and M? Yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> no. No, okay. no, 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 I don't think so. Okay, think yeah. so. Submission is when one, one uh, person in the relationship just kind of relinquishes their culture, follows the customs of the other culture, um, of their partner's culture. There is obliteration, which is much, 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 much more rare. Submission is the most common. Obliteration is the least common. That's where usually if the partners move to a different country, a third country, um, they basically abandon their own cultures and try to just do something new. Um, there's compromise, which is what it sounds like. Um, and then there's consensus, which is sort of like a temporary compromise, sort of agree to disagree, we'll negotiate through this when it comes up. Um, and I'm curious if you find these applicable to your relationships. But it was also much more bef because I was coming to China mm -hmm. at the beginning like a student, yeah? Yeah. So I was very excited. Learning the so culture, yeah. Learning the culture. So I spent one year... Um, in Hangzhou, where mm. I was eating only rice, <laughs> didn't eat bread, mm. <laughs> and I did everything Chinese. Uh -huh. Yeah, and um, but then as time goes by, okay, mm. done there, been there, done that, yeah. uh, lived in very shitty <laughs> flats, <laughs> don't want to go there anymore. Yeah. <laughs> so now mm. it's more like a compromise mm. uh, kind type of relationship, I would mm. think. Um, so yeah, I'm not. I've got. It's it's a bit because he's not speaking English so well. Right. So it's a bit like. Um, and French, I presume not. Uh, yeah, he, he only knows how to say camo, mouton, <laughs> stuff like that. Yeah. So it's it's like um, um, I can go out with his friends, but it's for him it's more difficult to go out with my friends, yes. especially when they don't speak Chinese. Chinese yeah. Ugh, I know yeah. that drives me crazy. Mm -hmm. It really so, bothers me. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah, I think maybe it's the thing which bothers me the yeah. most. The thing is that uh, for the time being, he's working, he's too busy to really learn English, because it really yeah. needs to, some time yeah, to yes. do that. Yeah. So it's like we are, it's a bit like uh, two lives, yeah, yeah. Uh, in a way. Okay, there's uh, what we do together, and, and then they, they are my friends in mm -hmm. here, and, and he's got his friends, and that's that's... We, we compromise, yeah. yeah. We find mm. okay. So I've got. I need. I need. I like handball. I like to play handball. Yeah. <laughs> uh, handball. So anyway, it's not his yeah. hobby. So I'm yeah. going. Yeah. I, I would go alone. Yeah. And so right. it's it's okay. I think it's any kind of relationship is like that. Yeah. Yeah. The only sure thing is a is a language barrier. It's yeah. this this part is for me is a bit annoying, and I think yeah. for him too. Yeah. So that is tough. Ted, what about you? The language is always the the challenge. Yeah. Um, and in a sense that in any kind of relationship, uh, in, in, in our particular case, the question now is uh, kind of like I mentioned earlier, is to kind of bring more en uh, English. Mm -hmm. And not just with my, my girls, but in, uh, my stepson, who actually, my stepson speaks English uh, the best of the three of them, mm -hmm. which is, 
interesting because he's quite good with languages. Ah, yeah. Yeah. But uh, the main reason, like you just said, is that because if, if one of the partners just speaks one language, then when he's with a group that and in the environment that he's, mm. he's not in his own language environment, yeah. it's very, very difficult. Yeah. And I think that's a, that's a, a, a major challenge. And I kind of, kind of, to tie in with what you were saying with the, the different models, it kind of depends where we are. Mm. I think if we were saying if we're in, in China, I would probably say it would be uh, kind of either a submission or more of a compromise type situation mm. where, you know, we'll eat Chinese some days and... We'll go west another day. Mm. Yeah. The issue. The other thing is my daughters. You know, the little one likes Chinese food better. The older one likes Western food better. Interesting. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, when you talk about diet, but then when you talk yeah. about the cultures and things, um, they're in Chinese schools basically. So they're getting a, a Chinese education, Chinese system. Down the line, we want to try to balance that with more of a Western education. It's, 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 it's a kind of a balancing situation. So that's why yeah. I would say it's kind of a. I would. Say, I guess the best word would say compromise. Yeah. Um, because. I can never can say we never really, uh, maybe initially it was submission in the sense that, like, you know, like uh, nieces, that when, you, when you're over here, you really want to immerse yourself and get into exactly. it. Exactly. And I was that way initially as well, but especially when I was in Taiwan. Mm -hmm. um, but as you get older, you, you still kind of pull back to your roots and yeah. your taste and you're yeah. doing things. So I agree with both of you. I think yeah. it's very variable. Um, mm. I, I ran it by my sister and I asked her what she thought. Uh, our parents' relationship was, and she said exactly the opposite of what I was going to think she was, she was going to say. And, and I thought it was, maybe it was part submission or maybe part compromise or maybe it was consensus. And my sister said, do you think it's obliteration? And I thought, that's really interesting. Mm. Um, but I think, that's a, I think that's a whole different...